Are you ready to get in the word? I'm ready to have some fun with you and we'll have a good time. We're going to call this one, The Time is at Hand. We're going to talk about pre preparation, how important it is. I think the Church of Jesus Christ, a lot of them now are beginning to seek God and prepare for what's coming. I believe that if you're going to go for a, a, a jog, you should uh, train. If you're going to go for a, a marathon, you should train for it. And, you know, and our life is a marathon, isn't it? Yes. It's a race set before us. Amen. And so I believe God is drawing all of us as his children closer to him and getting us into a position of hearing his voice and bringing forth a message to everyone we meet. Now, let me explain. You know, when I go to the store, I like going to the store. My wife sends me out with a list. When I go to the store, I look for someone that I can share Christ with. And let me encourage you. I like to go to Costco. I have what's called Costco Adventures with Christ. I really do. I, I, my wife and I, Linda and I, we pray. I said, Lord, I'll need a nice parking spot. I'll need one of those electric carts, and Costco's busy. And Lord, to get in there, because I've got bird seed to buy, and they're 40 pounds each, two of those, and, and toilet paper and all that. So going to Costco, you know, it means 100 bucks or more. Maybe you haven't been to Costco. Anyway. So the, the whole thing is, so I, I like to pray because I don't like hassles. Do you like hassles? I don't like SS, you know, I like to pray in advance. And so look, let me encourage you not doing that. Pray in advance over tomorrow. Hello. If you know, maybe you're going to see your sister. She's going to be flying in, in next week. Pray over that whole situation so that it goes well and the seeds of the kingdom can be planted. Say amen. And I just love going to the store. I remember meeting a Chris, and I hope you're watching Chris because he pops and watches our broadcast. He takes his, ch his children and his wife. They go to a beautiful church because they're way out, way out, way out past Graham. And I told them that it's better to stay there with the children's programs until we. And by the way, don't tell everybody we don't have a children's program. Pray a child's program in. We have Denise and Joe, but we also need other teachers. So just don't say what is. Pray what isn't. Could you say amen? Come on, help me out here. Don't let me carry these burdens in prayer. Anyway, so at the same time, going, so Chris, I met Chris at Safeway, and I was over there in the butter section, I was just about to pick up two pounds of butter for the wife, you know, she gives me the list, I have this little thing called the list, and I hit it, and it's got all the different stores and what's in them, what we're going to pick up at that time, makes it easy for the the one going in there. Anyway, so I was starting to share with a guy who was about to ready to buy a case of beer, and I told him, you know, that stunts your growth. You know, I was kind of kidding with him just to look for an opening, and this guy, Chris, heard me, and he says, do you love the Lord? And we got into the conversation, and the very next week, he came to church, and he had, he had food with us. And so we bless you, Chris, but I love going to the store. I like going to Costco. It's the weirdest thing when I go to, let me use a better word. It's the wonderfulest thing when I go to Costco. Why? Because the favor of God, I can see God using people. He'll have me meet somebody and they'll be overly friendly. Maybe it's the fact I'm in a card. <laughs> Things are stacked up the road. Well, let's get past that. But let your life become more of an adventure with God. Stop looking at, oh, I got to get up. I'm going to have heavy breathing. I'm going to have this. Stop looking that way towards tomorrow. Who holds tomorrow? BJ, who holds tomorrow? Amen. So let's read our, um, our, our paragraph. I want to tell you that this is a time for to be alert and to be in prayer. God is calling us. All to build the main things, keep the main things, the plain things. Mark chapter 13, verse 33 says, do we have it up? All righty, thank you guys. Take heed, watch. That means be alert. 
and pray, for you do not know when the time is. Now, let me tell you, if you're watching and praying, inside of you is Jesus. He will let you know when things are quickening, when things are getting quicker and closer. So if you're watching and praying and being with God, you won't be left behind. Say amen. God will take you anyway. I think there's going to be a lot of people surprised that they went. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. It is like a man going into a far country. Jesus left and he's coming again. And who left his house and gave authority to his servants. Hi, servants. God doesn't want us just to be children. He wants us to serve. Say amen. I mean, I don't know about you. You can have a lazy son or you can have a son that is helpful. Moving right along. He says, and left this house, gave authority. You and I have authority to his service. To each one, this, his work is according to your ability. And commanded the doorkeeper to watch. Now, who would be the doorkeeper? The Holy Spirit. Remember, if you go to John 10, it says that, the, that Jesus enters by the door uh, and the doorkeeper opens the door. That's the Holy Spirit. His job is to present. Can you say amen? So how do we know about the Father? He presents the Father to us. How do we know about Jesus? He presented Jesus to us and we accepted him. How do we know about the word? The Holy Spirit presents the word to us by what we call the Christian download. By revelation, he downloads into our spirit man revelations. Why? Because Jesus is the truth. Jesus is all the truth. And Jesus will bear witness in our heart when we see things that apply to our walk and our love for God. Amen. And we pursue that. We go after that. Now look what the rest of this say. Verse 35. Watch therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming. Now, remember, this is also written to the Jewish nation. And right now, a lot of them don't know Jesus. You need to pray for the, them to know the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Because they've been rejected him. Not all of them. I'm not mad at them. My goodness, I pray for them daily. But they need to become born again, all right? All right? Because they don't know when the master of the house is coming. In the morning, at midnight, crowing of the rooster in the morning lest coming suddenly find you sleeping. And what I say, I say to all, what? We should be what? Watching. So we, we, we shared, and just for all of us, we know that keep our eyes up. Everyone say, God told us to keep our eyes up. And on the author and the finisher of our faith. Why? Because it's so easy to let our concentration and our eyes slip down on ourselves, on the world, on our children, and too much to the fact that oftentimes the problem looks bigger than might it might actually be. Hello? Is, wouldn't that be a deception of the enemy? Of course it would be. The idea is to get our eyes down upon the natural realm. And why? Because the natural man can't receive a thing of the spirit, for though they, they are spiritually revealed. So God wants us up, expecting, watching, praying. Can you say amen? So that we can catch what he wants to say to us individual. Individually. He wants us to talk to us individually. Amen. Let's go ahead. And I want you to, um, we're going to cover these four areas. And as we do, I want to just kind of read my uh, paragraph to you. Write these notes down if you don't have them. Number one, we're going to cover these four areas. Hopefully, we'll hit them nice and, and complete so that you understand. Number one, to learn to be alert, the day is at hand. So we need to find out what that means. Because Jesus was saying the day is at hand at the time he was there. Now, that was over 2,000 years ago. He also says that the kingdom is from my hand to your hand. So what he was saying is, I'm showing you what the kingdom of God is going to be like when it comes. 
And so he began to teach disciples to get themselves prepared and ready. Do you guys remember what John the Baptist was called? He was the forerunner before Jesus, wasn't he? To prepare the way of the Lord. Right? I know, I know I'm saying a whole lot, but that's okay. Now, the church in this hour... We're like John the Baptist, or supposedly kind of like John the Baptist. Why? Well, our job is to get everyone ready for the coming of the, the Lord. What are you doing? Do you call your children up and when you're on the phone with them? Are you chit-chatting and just blowing the breeze? Or have you said, have you considered the fact that Jesus could be really close? How is your prayer life, dear one? You see, sometimes we need to call people back to the record of facing Christ. Why? So that the author and the finisher of their faith can take them into a deeper walk. Say amen, someone. And so a lot of us are up in years, so we just can't get out and start evangelizing. Some of you can. It's wonderful. And, and let me encourage you to do that. So be alert. The Lord is at hand, too. He what it means to be his child and a citizen. Everyone say, I'm a child and a citizen. And the third point we're going to cover, become a, a disciple of Christ. Become a disciple of Christ. Don't just say you know him. Don't just say, well, oh, praise the Lord. But become a student of God. Let us him become Something very important. Learn about him. I'm not talking about over studious. I'm just saying allow him to walk with you and teach and train you. Say amen. And then finally, fourthly, we're like the wind. Be spirit led. Say I'm like the wind. Didn't John, uh, didn't uh, Jesus talk to to Nicodemus and John and said, if a man be born again, he is like the wind. Okay, so we're going to cover that too. Say amen. So I want to say greetings this morning. The whole purpose of what we're going to learn today is how to become alert and not to be a sleepy system of a, just, you know, lukewarm. I don't like the word. But, you know, as Christians, we need to be sensitive to one another enough to pray for one another. Say amen. We need to avoid the practices in our life that would allow the enemy to torment us any or harass us to any degree. Say amen. We need to learn to do what the main things are. I want to make sure I don't step back too far. And the plain things. My pastor used to teach us this, don't get caught up in so much of this stuff that's so interesting all the time that your pursuit for Christ and understanding his ways and how to practice them, you lose sight of. Say amen. He's our shepherd, right? And we follow our shepherd, don't we? All right, this means not only are we children of God, but we are also citizens. We were strangers, foreigners to God. Now we've received his son. Now we are children of God and citizens to what? Let me express this to you. Did you know I'm a citizen? You are a citizen. If you're a citizen of three important things. Number one, did you know you are a citizen of the United States? Say amen. That gives you a right, a certain rights as a citizen or supposed to say amen. All right, not only that, but you are a citizen of the world, the earth. You were born in the earth. Hello. It's a privilege. You were created up from the earth and born in the earth, so the earth was given to man. So we are a citizen and in charge of the earth. Would you say yes? And third, now that we're born again, we are citizens of the kingdom of God. That means all his authority, power, dominion, influence, and expression is at our disposal. So knowing that we are no longer foreign to that, but we are learning to be a citizen, there's a lot of citizen bill of rights that we should be studying that what we have, because there's a lot of deceptions that the enemy is keeping the children from knowing. 
if you get any kind of teaching or sharing and revelation, it doesn't matter where it comes from here or another place. Don't keep it to yourself. Pass it along to those who might need to hear. Hey, the good news of Jesus Christ. Say amen. All right, so let's go to our first point. Point one, be alert. The day is at hand. Go with me to Romans 13. And I thank you, honey, for praying I don't ramble too much. <laughs> I do that sometimes. I watch you guys. It, you guys are amazing to watch in, in a good way. We're doing communion. I'm holding the bread, and I'm talking. People put their bread down. He's going to talk for another 10 minutes, I know, before he takes the bread. Come on, laugh with me. All right, Romans 13, it says in verse 11, and do this. In other words, something about doing the word, huh? And do this knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of slumber. That's, this is a sleepy state. This means this in, in, don't care as long as I'm going to make a sleepy state. Awake out of sleep, okay? And for now, our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. How many here know you're growing in the Lord? Thank you, God, you're growing. So salvation is closer to you. You're growing up in yourself into Christ. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off. Everyone say, push aside the works of darkness. That means all your old man. Anything that would get you into a place. Let's say you're just going along. You're enjoying God and something really kind of weird comes through your mind. Just push it aside. Don't talk about it. Just push it aside. Maybe an interruption. Oh, you forgot to do this. Push it aside. Don't let those things occupy you in the middle of your relating with God. Those are only distractions. Begin to know and understand how your mind works. Satan suggests he can't read your mind. And he knows by watching you through the years that when he suggests, if you operate and wiggle, he goes, ha, 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 and he feeds it. Okay? So play the poker face. Smile at somebody next to you and say, hey, you look like very solemn in your belief to God. Anyway, let's move on. What did he say? Okay, so it gives us wisdom. The night is far spent. In other words, let's not waste any more time. Amen. All right. It says, let us walk properly, or the old says uprightly, as in the day, not in rivalry. Hey, I'm in competition with somebody, so my church is better than your church. You see, not in rivalry. Say amen. Amen. And drunkenness. Drunkenness, listen to me. He uses the term, don't be intoxicated with something. People can be intoxicated with food. Hello? Amen. Go back into history and see about the, or the all kinds of, of the gluttony things that they did. That's just past. So don't be drunk. Drunk means don't be intoxicated in such a way that you can't be yourself. Everyone say, got it. We're not going to stay there very long. Okay. Amen. Everybody gets squidgety, and I want nobody squidgety. Let us walk properly in the day, not in rivalry, competition, and drunkenness, not in lewdness, calling names, putting people down, not in lust. Oh, I can't get enough of this. Oh, I want both lives. Living in the world, living with God. Now, I'm just kind of hamming it up for you. Not in strife in arguing. You know, there are people that just love to argue. Don't get involved. Smile at them. Say, you know, I'm just not going to argue. Sorry. That's a real refreshing thing to say. Moving right along. And envy. Did you know there's always going to be somebody better than you? And there's always going to be somebody in a worse condition than you. The idea is to get yourself balanced, get yourself healthy so that you can help people that are less than you to become whole again. Can you say amen? You see, all our life, you and I are filtering good from evil. Good from evil. Good, because that's what Adam put us in. So learn to not focus on the things that are not of God or not things that are good or full of praise. Don't bring everybody's problems. I will, do you realize somebody's going to have blah, 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 blah. That, that, That's just not a good thing. Hey, pray for me. We're believing for their healing. 
That is a good thing. We all through our day are filtering. We should be filtering good from evil. What's inspiring? Saying what's, what's guiding us? What's, what's talking to us? Hello? Everything has a voice, doesn't it? Nowadays, even our car. <laughs> Your phone has a voice. Have you ever hit the little voice thing on it? Just speak whatever you want, and I'll type it out for you. Amen. So here we go. So again, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. What are we to put on? Okay. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. Right? So we have what's called armor of light. Who is the light? Jesus is the light. Now, your armor, I'm going to have to cover this. Remember, you're a citizen in a kingdom. So we need to begin to believe and act like that. It's not hard. It's not a prideful thing. You need to believe and act that way. Because remember that doubt and unbelief is what keeps us from God's best. Now, I believe, I believe you believe it too, that God has already given us his best through his son, Jesus. And that we are to pursue him and his word so that we can understand how to behave and how to work with God in this life. Can you say amen? All right. As we behave and work with God, our life gets better. We get shielded more. And again, going back to the armor, the armor is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's light. So him being light around us is in direct, direct, bright or dimness to your prayer life. Pray a little. There's more of us than there are him. Remember, we need to grow up out of ourselves into Christ. In order to do that, we have to have the exposure of God in our life. We are being exposed to God. Don't feel like you're failing. Just keep being exposed to God. Remember, if you planted a seed, you don't go in two weeks and dig it up. You let it grow and let it grow, and you keep consistent and consistent. You stay plugged in. Because your armor doesn't fall off, just like Jesus never leaves you. It dims because of our human will. So we go to God daily, get a good dose of light, cleansing, building up adjustment so that we can maintain our citizenship within the power and the influence of the kingdom. Now, did I say that too quick? Okay, good. Amen. Amen. And remember something, these are recorded, so you can go back, you've got notes. Let's go over a couple of points. Be alert, the day is at hand, okay? So all of us, I believe, we all sense the urgency in the air. Now, some of it's backed off a bit because of prayer, but there's an urgency about something is about to happen. Can you, can you sense it? You can sense it inside of you. The times that we're living for the world are perilous times. But for the church, these are exciting times. Why? Because it makes us to be with God more so that we hear our shepherd about ready to come and get us. The neat thing about it is we have the Holy Spirit to instruct us on how to practice the principles of his kingdom. Say amen. These are the last days. These are perilous times for the lost, but they are wonderful times for the saved. Why? We run to Jesus. Can I tell you my merry-go-round thing? Years ago, God always used to talk to me in visions because I couldn't spend a lot of time with him with the two kids and the wife and all the ministry, everything going crazy. And God would give me little pictures. He's still done it. He's so wonderful. How many has ever seen, remember those merry-go-rounds in the playground? Yeah, remember? And then we would get on the merry-go-round, then some bully, I mean, it's almost like clockwork, would decide to, he's going to get it going so fast that either you're going to fall off or nobody can get on. He's just bullying the whole thing, right? And I was just looking at that in my dream, just as clear as could be, and there I was 
holding on for dear life. And this bull, I was the only one on there. And the bully was just a, went, flinging me and getting me busy. I couldn't think. I couldn't pray. I was just feeling the pressures pulling me and pulling me and pulling me. And then I heard a voice. What was that, Pastor Kerry? Run to the sinner. Because <laughs> when you go to the center of the merry ground, there is no tri centrifugal force. And that booger can be pulling it all as fast as you can. You can be sitting there holding on and say, do all you want. Come and get me. Jump on now, you dude. <laughs> so God says, that's the devil. He's trying to get you so busy that you feel the pressures of life pulling you, pulling you away. I say, run to me, son. Run to me. And he said, all of you, run to him every day. Get a nice dose of staying in the center of things, being balanced. Can you say amen? Fourthly, remember, we live and dwell in a kingdom. So we've got to learn to be a citizen. And it's like walking around inside an armor tank. Now, I, now I remember back over here in Idaho when I was sharing with my cousin. And God gave me this picture. Folks, have you ever been next to an, a military tank? You know, seen one at Fort Lewis or something? How powerful they are? And if you haven't, get a picture of one. Google it or whatever. They're huge. Now, the tank represents something. And there you are in the tank. Now, Jesus came and he stripped the devil of his authority. Would you agree? And Jesus is all power in heaven and earth is given unto me. Would you agree? So Satan is out there with a bullhorn and a squirt gun outside the tank, your tank. And his mastered greatest effort is to talk to you out of your walk or your tank, out where he's at. And then when he's done, he's just going to squirt you because he can't kill you. You belong to God. And that's where a lot of Christians are. They're out of their tank, being squirted all the time and having struggles all the time. They don't know how to dwell in the kingdom, which is the, the tank in Jesus Christ. Say, Jesus is my tank. Now, you've got the weaponry. You've got the computers in those new tanks. You are surrounded by unpenetrable, especially by a squirt gun, weaponry. Now, you need to start thinking that because that's who you are. And because it's not taught, we can't believe for things. You know, faith comes by hearing, right? And faith is a substance of things we hope for or see pictures of. So say, I dwell in a tank. I'm in a kingdom. I'm in Christ, in God. So get a picture of where you are really at with God. Every time you come to God in the morning, that's where he positions you. I said, every time that you go to God in the morning, just say hi, he positions you back in the tank. What, I got out of the tank at night? Who knows what you do at night? Come on, laugh at me or laugh with me. Are you with me? Jesus stripped the devil of all the power. All he has is he's a big blowhard, he's a bully, and he's a con artist. He cannot make you sick. He cannot give you cancer. He cannot kill your kids. It's our fear opening the door and not praying for them that could kill our kids. So let's not give him the power he doesn't have. And let's not give him our power by him deceiving us into giving him that power. But let us rather be trained by the Holy Spirit how to be a child of God and a kingdom and a citizen and how to learn the influences, how to release God every time, how to walk in the Spirit, how to enjoy God rejuvenating us every day. That's who we are and that is our inheritance. Now, whether or not you receive that or not, it's up to you. See, you're not going to keep me from it. Amen. I don't want I want you to have it. I used to always kid with everybody. They always tell me how God's blessing. I says, when you get rich, I want to drive your limo. 
It's a joke. I'd rather be humble and be rich than be rich and not be humble. All right, let's look at a scripture that tells us also to be alert and why. How many know there is an outlawed demon, spiritual devil in this world? He has a fallen, broken kingdom he's trying to operate. He borrowed one of God's computers, which doesn't have all the stuff, but has enough on all of us to run temptation rhythms on us. So grow up past that. Get rid of those things you know the devil's always plaguing you with and overcome temptation for you shall receive a crown of joy, James 1 says. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 and 9 says, Be sober in this time. Be vigilant. In other words, watchful, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion. He's not a roaring lion. His teeth have been pulled, but he's like one. He makes the appearance. Remember, a shadow looks bigger than the one making the shadow. He has the ability to project himself larger than what he is. In fact, if you read the, the Ezekiel 30, 28 and Isaiah, it says people will look at him at the end of the age and say, is this the man that did that? Remember, he has a machine, a supernatural machine. Made by God, he twisted and tilted it in 180 degrees the opposite. Then he, his angels fell down on the earth, and they have their own gospel. Now, either we pay attention to God and the true gospel, or we just let the world suck us up. And that's why John says, look, the big killer today is love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For that which is of the world, the lust of the flesh, the pride of eyes, and the lust of life, these are of the world, and they are passing away. But he who does my will shall abide forever. Say amen. So our old man, our fleshly man, has all those lusts. That's why I crucify him daily. All right, so be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil, is looking for you. Seeking whom he may devour. Resist him. Just stop and stand and just get into God. Steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same things are happening to everyone else. You're not the only one. Don't let the devil put you off into a corner, make you think you're the only one feeling this way. That's a deception. Thank you for that, amen. James 4, 7 and 8 says, Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. So you see the sowing and reaping? All right, point two. His child a citizen. You are God's child and a citizen of the kingdom of God. So let's look quickly at these scriptures. John 1, 12 says, but as many as received Jesus, to them he gave the authority or the right to become children of God. And to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And God said just right there, that he purposed and planned for you to be born this day for a purpose of his. Say amen. Say, I'm God's child. I'm, I belong to his kingdom. Amen. So you go down into Ephesians in this scripture, verse, uh, chapter 2, verse uh, 19 through 22, Ephesians 2. Now, therefore, you are no longer a stranger or a foreigner, but fellow citizens with the saints and the members of the household of God. And having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself be the chief cornerstone. He's our model. We model our life after him, not after Pastor Carey. Give me a chuckle. In whom also the whole building, all of us together are being built up, fitted together grows into a holy temple, a set-apart people of God in the Lord, in whom you also are being built up together. Together with who? All of us together. For a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. 
It's a wonderful thing where Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst. There's a bunch of us at church. God builds a tabernacle of praise and worship and manifests. People can get healed in that atmosphere. It's kind of like a spring water. You've been in the desert, and now Sunday you come to drink. Now, we know that you meet with God every day, but for many people, they need a place to come, drink, and learn about God. Say amen. A couple of points. Now that we have Jesus Christ on the inside of us, we are a child of the king. A citizen in three realms, I told you earlier, the greatest of these is the kingdom of God. Two, this means that in Christ we can live, actually enjoy our Christianity, the full benefits of his kingdom and his power. Do you believe that? Start enjoying it. This kingdom, thirdly, is displayed in his full authority it has full authority, jurisdiction, dominion. You have miraculous powers at your disposal and influence. You can send forth God's influence. Billy Graham, before he would preach, would send forth almost a year in advance intercessors praying for influence, praying for favor, so that when he would have his meeting, they will be packed. How much prayer do you pray for our meetings? The message is even greater here. Not that we're any better. It's just there's something blocking, and we don't want the message being blocked from getting out. This means that in Christ, you and I can live and enjoy the benefits, all the benefits of God. Forget not all his benefits. And then the kingdom and in his display again, we have all of that within us, around us, and we need to settle in and just love being a believer in Christ. Can you say amen? amen. So you're a child and also a citizen of God. Our next point, be a disciple of Christ, not just someone that knows him. I like to use this funny illustration. There is a lot of people professing Christ. And wonderful, because to confess and profess Christ means that you got born again. But there's not enough people really rocking close to Christ, maybe like they should. We'll put it that way. God wants us to get closer, learn to walk every day with him and enjoy the presence of God and let him take us and break us loose out of our ruts. He might say, you want to breathe better? Then you're going to have to get up and trust me to exercise a little more. But it goes against everything I can feel. That's exactly right. Who's been holding you there? Listen to another thing I want to share with you. Sometimes a doctor will tell you, and this might fit, a certain thing. So what happens? You start adjusting yourself for what the doctor says. Now, does Dr. Jesus talk like that? And does he put you in a bondage? If the doctor says, well, you're always going to expect to be tired and have this situation. If you embrace that above what Jesus says, by your stripes you're healed, then you lock yourself into a law that's very hard to break out of and get your healing. Did you catch what I said? Watch what comes out of your mouth because Satan's writing it down too. So the doctor tells you you're going to be like this. I always keep my mouth shut and look at him like, huh? Uh? and then I go to God. God's truth is way above truth, truth. What do you mean? You were lost. You were lost. But Jesus says, I've got salvation for you. You took God's truth and you applied it in your life, and now you're saved. Same thing with healing. Don't take what the doctor says above what God says. Why? It locks you into bondage. People, I know of my, my, one of my teachers, Pastor, Pastor Kenneth E. Hagen, Pastor Kenneth Hagen, he, he told a story 
that he knew of a guy, now, please, this is not applied to anybody, that would go around all the time. He says, I'm going to die at the age of 45, just like my dad did. It's all in our family. And every time that they would get together, he would always be saying that. I'm going to die. I'm, going to, I'm never going to get past to live like you guys are going to live. And he had locked in and started speaking that. Guess what? Yes. So listen, death and life are in the power of the tongue. It's not, God is not being stupid telling us that. He's being smart. He says, look, at your tongue can be the very rudder or the steering wheel of your life. Are always talking down on everything? Then you're never going to go anywhere. How about start talking up and encouraging people, saying, I can do, I can do all things to Christ, and start doing that so your steering wheel gets back where it belongs. Also, another thing is you put off so many hurts as a human being. When you're negative and you're down, your hurts go way down low and creates uh, depression physically. Get yourself up. Make yourself happy. Laugh even when you don't want to. Why? It brings the joy, the hurts up, so that you can receive from God and you're not locked away. Every one of us say amen. 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 Remember, I seek the Lord about what I should say and do, but I want to build you up, okay? Be a disciple of Christ. Go with me to Luke chapter 9, please. Verse 23 to 26. I sure love you guys. You're a wonderful blessing. There's some real keys and mysteries in this scripture. Verse 20 feet. Then he said to them all, everybody was excited. He was healing them. He was feeding them. They were seeing miraculous things. He didn't, didn't seem to, to kiss the, the rear end of the government. He was their leader. Everything was going good as long as everything was going good. Then he said to them, right in the midst of all that, if anyone desires to come after me, how many here in this room desire to come after Jesus? How many Christians and believers you know are doing the same? They're coming after him. But what the enemy keeps hiding from all believers, a lot of believers, not you, because you're hearing this, is hiding this next fact. If you're going to follow Jesus, you have to first do what? Deny himself. You have to deny yourself daily. Take up his cross. That means your death. Take up not living for you, but living your death so that God can live through you and follow me. Verse 24. For whoever desires to save his life, got to work, got to get, got to work, get to get, will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, in other words, what you're doing you put in God's hands your business, all that you're doing it, and you change the motive in why you do it. Lose your life. Well, find life. Can you say amen? Well, save this life for my sake. We'll save it. Then at verse 25, listen. What does it profit if a man gain the whole world and he himself, his soul has been lost? That means you've lost your mind. That means when your soul is lost, that means you don't know who you are anymore. It doesn't mean that you're going to hell just like religious people teach. It does mean that. But it means that you're unable to think clear, clearly, operate your mind. So you get that back. That's your right to think clearly. Can you say amen? What is the profit then? If you've got all these toys... And you have no healthy soul and no relationship with God. Someone say, oh my. For, for whoever, and then it goes on. Okay. For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in of his own glory. He came at Pentecost, rose from the dead, and his fathers and all of us holy angels. In other words, if you don't lift up Jesus, God cannot lift you up. 
Lift up Jesus and he will lift you up. Bless Israel and you'll be blessed. Same kind of principle. A couple of points. Church, the born-again believer has God living on the inside of them. Yay! And we have to put him in charge of our life. Is God in control of everything? No. What you put him in charge of in your life. He certainly uh, isn't in charge of everything. Two, if we don't put him in charge, it becomes easier for us to get sucked away in our flesh and in the world system. Thirdly, Jesus is telling his disciples that they have to die to their flesh and its desires if they want to follow and get great results as a miraculous believer. Can you say amen? Fourthly, let us take a look at the wisdom Jesus spoke to his disciples at the very start of their ministry together. So in Matthew chapter 5, if you'd like to follow along with me, we're going to look around. I'm going to read this rather quickly. Now, what you will be seeing here is Jesus is saying to these disciples, which is often lost in a little bit of the translation and religious interpretation. I'm not putting the Bible down. It's accurate. But I'm going to bring out the real meaning. Jesus is looking at his disciples. He says, look, if you really want what I got, follow me like I say you can follow me, then you need to pay attention to what I'm about to tell you. Say amen. So point, uh, verse 1 says, And seeing the multitudes, Jesus went up into a mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, What I'm going to give you guys is for your entire life, and will teach you how to relate to mankind, how to work with me, and how to get to a place where I can always use you and work through you. You want that, boys? Yes, we do. Then, here's what I tell you. First, blessed is the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Five, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Six, blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Seven, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy, so in reaping. Eight, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will perceive God to his fullness. And nine, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Ten, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness or doing right's sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Eleven, blessed are you when people revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets that were before you. Now, what he's teaching them is to see the difference between the old life, the old world, and the new life in God. He says, the people, if you're going down to go save the world and change the world and make it a happy place, no, because they're going to kill you and they're going to shoot you. They're not going to understand you. So know it right up front, boys. You have to die to yourself. You have to learn to take up your cross so that you aren't easily pulled away by a fence and, and pulled into the world and politics so that you're non-effective and winning people to me. That's what he actually said there. First is, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the what? Kingdom of God. Now listen, poor in spirit means exactly like this. Blessed is the person that comes to the end of their own selfishness and depend upon God to pull them out. Theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are all those that mourn, feel sorry when they make mistakes, feel sorry in the condition of this world, but they stay soft because of mourning, crying, tearing, that they're always usable of God. Paul, look at the next one. Jesus, what at the next one is? Blessed are the meek. People don't understand this. A meek person, I, one of my favorite persons to just pull out, stick on the tape, is Scott. Scott has been really meek. You can tell there's something about that strong man that he's got a softness to him. That's meekness. It's like a horse. Here's this mighty horse that could stomp on you, break you apart, fall on you. 
But here we're riding the horse with loose reins and guiding it wherever we guide the horse. That horse has been meeked. Now look at, uh, look at humanity. Look at a regular human being just, just for a minute. Uh, they're argumentative. They're selfish, unteachable. Is that meekness? Well, of course not. Can anybody teach them or help guide their life? No, because they're not meek. So Jesus is saying, boys, guys, my disciples, I love you, but you're going to have to learn to become meek. You're going to have to learn to let me drive your life. Let me drive your car. People, I want to drive your car. Yes, we're going to go so far. Can you say amen? <laughs> Our life is like a vehicle. Let Jesus guide and lead you. Why? You'll be much, much healthier. Can you say amen? Yeah. Blessed are the meek, teachable, instructable, able by God to lead them, guide them. They shall inherit the earth. Who is God going to give the earth back to after he cleanses it and renovates it? Moi, you guys, us, hello, the meek shall inherit the earth. Now that's after he burns it and renovates it. You don't want to hang around till he does that. You'll be in heaven. Then the next one, blessed are those that hunger and thirst. You see, after you get stripped away from that, he's saying, hey, you guys, you should be hungering for more of God and thirsting for more of his way. Say amen. Are you doing that? Say amen. Amen. You should be hungering and thirsting for more. Amen. Why? Because your old man's been crucified and stripped away, and the new man is rising up. Now, look what happens. We should take all of this goodness of God, Peggy, and listen. Take it right out. After we've been filled, after we hunger and thirst, every day we get filled. What do we do? Blessed are the... We start becoming merciful to people. Remember when you first got saved? How many ignorant and, and kind of dumb things you said and did? Be merciful to others as they're coming up through the ranks. Say amen. Sowing and reaping. Blessed are the poor, pure in heart, for they shall what? See God. Now, the word see there means to perceive spiritually, because we see with our spiritual mind, spiritual eyes. Okay? If your heart is pure towards God, because you're meeting with him every day, get cleansed, and it is, then guess what? Your pureness in the heart's going to make you perceive things that no one else can pick up. Say amen. amen. So he's saying this to his disciples and to us. Blessed are the next. Blessed are the peacemakers. It doesn't feel good to argue. It is no good to try to prove our points. The important thing is to share Jesus and somebody wants to argue, say, well, look, I'm just going to give you the seed. You deal with it, but I love you with all my heart. Don't get yourself into arguing the scripture. You can't find one place where it says to debate scripture. It says defend the gospel. It didn't say debate the scripture. And debating is strife. If you think about it, it's arguing, isn't it? How does Satan get his power, everyone? By feeding off of the arguing and the frustrations that we give him. Say amen. How, we, how am I doing up there, dear? Huh? All right. She gives me this look. I, she said, when I look at you, dear, you make time stand still. Hallelujah. All right. Then it goes on. Bless pure heart, bless the peacemaker. Then he says, blessed are those who persecute. In other words, here's, he's telling us with all the wisdom he can don't look for people to pat you on the back and tell you you're a wonderful person all the time. Say amen. Now, why would Jesus say that? Well, for us to understand the Jewish people, they love to praise them in. Remember, all of his disciples, were only about one maybe, was Jewish. 
So they love praises and big celebrations and stuff, and I'm not putting that down. But if that's all you're looking for is the praise of men, we're deceived. Hello. It's just don't look for, for them to pat you on the back and say, Carrie, you've been a good boy. Look for them when you're, they're in heaven to thank you for telling them the truth. Say amen. But when you're here on earth, people are going to say all oh, men are evil. They're going to persecute you. I have people that still don't like me, and I've never done one thing wrong with them. I don't trust him. Why? Because you listen to the gossip about him all the times before. And it painted a, a law and a picture in your mind. And you can't get over that picture. You know, Satan, the Satan uses the same tactic, just different ways on everything. He never changes. Remember, he's just the same old trudge you always used to be. He's lost and he is sentenced to hell. Please don't listen to him. And then besides all of that, great and yours is the kingdom. Then he goes, blessed are you when they say revile you and persecute you, say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. It says for us to do what? It says what? Rejoice. Man, I watched a Christian. This is a joke, please. It's none of you. Years and years ago, get upset because he had to do the dishes. He lost his joy. You should be a joy to be alive. Can you say amen? The idea of what I'm saying is, oftentimes, we focus too much on what the enemy tries to put before us, and yet, God wants us to look at him. Let's go to the next point, Pastor Kerry. We are like the wind. Can you say amen? Spirit-led people. Now go with me to John chapter 3. I'm going to have to drink some water here. i got the hiccups. Now remember a wonderful man of the Jews came to Jesus by night. His name was Nicodemus, but he was curious about God because he saw Jesus performing and God working through him doing these miracles. And remember, Jesus always spoke the truth. If somebody asked him the truth, he always told them the truth. Remember the lawyer, the lawyer came to Jesus and says, what must I do to be saved? And Jesus told him the truth. He says, what, says, what does the law say? And the guy quoted all the law except for covetousness and honoring his father and mother. <laughs> and Jesus says, you're really, really close in obeying the law. But one thing you really need to do is sell what holds you in bondage and give everything to me and come follow me. Now, that's Jesus. It's not a message to you to sell everything. But the idea is he was in bondage. What's, it, what's holding us in bondage, if anything? And if nothing, then keep in your freedoms. Can you say amen? And then Jesus answered his question. He said, what must I do to be saved? And then so he told the story of salvation. Jesus always answers the question. But you've got to listen how he answers them. Can you say amen? All right, like the wind. John 3, verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Remember the Jews seek after a sign? Interesting is like that, huh? Okay. And Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot perceive or see the kingdom of God. You won't be able to operate in the spirit realm until you get your spirit changed and you become born again. Verse 4, Nicodemus said to him, being a natural man, a religious man, and he, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time in his mother's womb and be born? Well, we all know that, okay? Look at what Jesus said in 5. And Jesus ans answered and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water, natural birth, we came out of a sack of water in the womb, and of the Spirit got born again, spiritual birth. He cannot enter into the dominion, power, influence of God. 
That which is born of the flesh, natural birth, is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit, being born again, spiritual birth, is spirit. Do not think this a hard thing. Don't marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. Then he says something really strange. And God the other day talked to me about this, and I want to convey it the way he told me. The wind blows where it lists and wishes, and you can hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes and from where it goes. So is everyone born of the Spirit. I went to God. I said, what do you mean by that? He says, well, number one, the devil doesn't know what you're thinking until you open your mouth and tell him. He says, now that you're born again, I dwell in you. So I have, if you let me put me in charge, I will lead your life where he can't figure out what you're going to do. Even in your daily walk and your daily routine, I can shield you in your daily walk. But most people, and then he said to me, most people are walking for me and not walking in me through me. And it says that hinders them and allows them to make too many mistakes. And they're easily noticed by the enemy. It becomes by. And I said, well, what else do you mean? He says, I want you to be like the wind. First of all, and then, and then I'm going to explain it to you. We know the devil can't read our minds. Say amen. But he hears our mouth and can see what intentions we have after he suggests to us. So we are tempted when he suggests things to us. Hello. So we can get all kinds of suggestions going through here. You just plead the blood of Jesus over your mind. It doesn't mean that we're receiving anything he's saying. In fact, why do we let the devil know we're hearing what he's saying to us? By speaking it. This is what Jesus is referring to. He's referring to us being like the wind, moving through this planet, this fallen earth, this shadow of death, by the spirit of the living God. Our mind is focused on God. Our heart is filled with God. And he's trying to suggest all this and all that. He doesn't know what God is saying to us. He doesn't know what God is directing us. Only unless we tip him off. Do you really got a name on? Do you really got that? So we become like the wind to him. He knows we're here. He knows he's hoping that we'll get back into the old rhythms of things. Instead of getting up morning, presenting ourselves, getting God to focus us all in, and then God giving us our instructions, which could be nothing more than to enjoy him throughout the day. Hello, go through your regular routine. But you're doing it now in Christ, shielded. Within a kingdom, can you say amen? And to him, we appear like the wind. We move and we're directed. All of us working in the yard, working wherever we're doing, being like the wind. Why? We're singing and making melody in our hearts. Why? Because he's suggesting all kinds of stuff. And listen, here's a little suggestion for you. When you feel your mind is being overloaded by his stuff, it's a good sign. Because he's losing control of you. Keep pursuing on. Keep doing. Do not vocalize what he's suggesting to you. It's absolutely obvious. Certain things will be certain ways if God doesn't intervene. But do not let him know he's irritating you. Let me encourage you to learn the wisdom of Jesus. Let me ask you, did Jesus ever get tempted? Did Jesus ever get attacked by his own disciples? Judas? And we better than Jesus? What did he do? He pulled into his father, he prayed, he sought God, and he became like the wind. So can you. For the works, Jesus said, that I do, shall you do also. And even greater works than these shall you do. Why? There's more of us. There's one reason. Because I go to the Father. Why? And set the kingdom, set the Holy Spirit. And if you will learn my ways, I will move you like the wind through your life. And you will be able to win certain people, touch certain lives, and prosper. Hello. Reality says, oh, no, you can't do that. 
But see, the gospel has been hidden from us. And remember, this stuff is not being taught. I know several that are teaching this, and probably more than I know. But you need to get a hold of the word, and you need to find out what God's given you in your inheritance. Not only be a child, but a citizen, one who has authority in the kingdom. Did you get something out of that this morning? Give the Lord praise.